this one situation ship kind of broke the cycle or if they just like straight up send you the you up text like I was like I love this I love you but I don't like talking about marriage I'm sexy that's just one of the questions <laughs> what do you think about committing to a long-term relationship early I'm pretty sure I explored down there before I even had my first kiss Hey guys, it's Haley here and today we're filming a girl talk video that's been long overdue on my channel. I don't know why I leave months of gaps in between the videos in this series because they're my favorite videos to film ever. I thrive in front of the camera when I can wear comfy clothes, sit on my bed and get super like deep, personal and like a little juicy with like the questions I'm answering that you guys are sending along to me. I feel like we've also like grown up together throughout the years with each video. In my first girl talk videos it would be like, oh my god I just got my period, like how do I use a tampon? And then a few years later, we kind of like leveled up and it was like, oh my God, I'm having sex for the first time. Like, tell me about that. I like missed hanging out with you guys and feeling like I'm at a sleepover and just like having these like chit chat videos. It's so funny. I just got a text from my dad about a girl talk video that I posted on my Turkish channel like last week. I do like the same series in Turkish. It's funny because the video is called having sex for the first time. And it was just like pretty explicit in the healthiest way possible. And my dad just texted me being like, I just watched your Turkish girl talk video. I really enjoyed it. Your commentary is great. I'm very proud of you. And he goes on to quote this journalist that he really likes, which actually is a quote from Ernest Hemingway, I think, that this journalist probably just translated into Turkish. The best writers get their message across in the easiest way possible. A lot of people like to present their sentences as like a floral arrangement, but sometimes the best way to get the feeling across is just giving somebody a daisy that you picked off the grass. I just thought it was funny. He's like telling me, I think that you can get the same messages across by being more concise and with shorter sentences and then sends me a heart. <laughs> I love that that's the comment that he made when I'm literally like talking about penises in that video. Ah, uh, let me text him back really fast. So like every other video, we're gonna get deep, we're gonna get personal, very vulnerable. I feel like over the years, I've really like built the muscle of facing every issue, every emotion that I'm dealing with straight on. I used to be the type of person that would tuck things away under the rug and distract myself by doing really fun things to keep my life exciting, where there was like a gray cloud kind of just like collecting on the side. And I felt like if I kind of turned my head away, as long as I didn't see it, it didn't exist. But unfortunately, life doesn't work out like that. And I think starting therapy for the first time a few years ago was the way that I kind of started integrating those tools into my everyday life, which is why I quickly want to talk about the sponsor of this video, which is BetterHelp. I personally love working with BetterHelp because I always want to work with companies that I genuinely feel like make a positive impact on your lives. And I think therapy and BetterHelp as a platform is exactly that. I started therapy for the first time around two years ago when I really felt myself going through this like depression, like rabbit hole and had a hard time waking up in the morning and like living life without just being a pessimist about everything. And it was therapy that helped pull me out of that dark place in my life. I'm just so grateful that we have resources like that available to us. I also feel like as human beings, we were kind of like born into the society that goes against the human nature of the way that we're supposed to be living. There are so many odds stacked against us. I don't even think that you need to necessarily have an anxiety disorder or depression as like the qualifying like prereqs that would require you to be in therapy. I think therapy is a beneficial tool for anybody living in this world, just going through their everyday lives. And I know how hard it is to find a therapist. There's so many different types of therapists. Therapy can get really expensive. And even though I feel like mental health over the past few years has definitely been a topic that's been more destigmatized than it was in the past, access to therapy hasn't necessarily aligned. It still is pretty difficult to find a therapist, especially when you're limited to the ones in your area or they're super expensive. You don't exactly know where to go, which is why I'm happy to be working with BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes finding a therapist so much easier. It's an online platform, so you would have all your sessions remotely and when you first sign up you fill out this questionnaire so that they can help find a therapist that's going to cater to your personal needs for example i'm an immigrant i'm turkish american so when i was finding my therapist it was really important that it could be someone that was multicultural like wasn't just born and raised in the u.s in order for them to be able to understand like my family dynamic and like my personal growth journey better and finding a therapist is like dating like you're not going to find your person like the one that you're going to be with forever like right off the bat 
back. You have to try on a bunch of shoes until you find the one that fits, which is why I like BetterHelp because when you're on this platform that has all these different therapists to choose from, the chances of you matching up with the person that's gonna help change your life is just higher. You don't have to stress about like having the right insurance. It's definitely a lot more affordable than traditional therapy that you can find in the real world. You can switch from therapist to therapist without any extra cost. It just makes finding mental health support easier. And I feel like BetterHelp really just helps simplify that. So if therapy has been something that's been on your mind and you're really interested in trying it out, my link is betterhelp.com slash Haley Sunny and you'll get 10% off your first month of sessions. Thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's get into the video. I'm very excited. I just asked you guys to send your questions on my story on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me on there. Keep up with my stories because that's always where I put my question box. Your questions are always anonymous. So no one's gonna know your name. Don't worry. Even though I do see all of you guys using your burner account to send me these questions. Are we having trust issues, you guys? It's okay though, I feel you. What do you think about committing to a long-term relationship early, like in your early 20s? Okay, this is a very relevant question for me because as you guys know, I came out of like a pretty long relationship last year. So I've been single for almost a year and a half now actually. And it was almost a three year relationship. Before that I was in another almost three year relationship. So I've kind of like found myself in these long relationships just because of the way I grew up. I just like wouldn't really get attached to things easily because I would move all the time. I'd switch schools every year Year, I'd say bye to old friends every year, leave them behind, start fresh, start new. So I'm very good with change and keeping things going and moving. So the idea of like only knowing this one person for like a long amount of time was just something that would scare me. I've also always been the type of person that I'm like, what if there's something better for me out there? It's really hard for me to settle. And I thought this was like the way of life. Like everyone in the world, every young person should be experimenting and like going on dates with like a bunch of people. It's like, I thought that should be like the norm. Cause I thought like the only way to grow and like find out things about yourself and what you like is if you were tasting all the flavors. Like how are you gonna know that chocolate is your favorite flavor at the ice cream shop if you haven't tried every single flavor at the ice cream shop, right? This was like kind of my mindset. But as I've gotten older and I've come across couples that have been together for so long and they've stayed together, I've kind of realized like it really depends from person to person. Some people try chocolate and say, you know what? This is as good as it gets for me I don't even give a f about what else they have to offer this is it this is rocking my boat and I'm sticking to it and now I think I've matured enough where I can respect that something that I feel like I have a very good sense of like this is kind of like my superpower is I can meet a couple sniff it out I literally don't even have to know like each of these people like individually and I can just tell if they're gonna last or not and every time I make a prediction it has never failed me and some of these couples that I've seen interact and be with together have have been couples in their early 20s you can just feel how real their relationship and their love and like what they have going for each other is from outside the relationship over the past year and a half I've definitely been more in my like single girl dating era and I've gone on dates with so many people I've met so many guys some of them have been a single date where I met a different person got to know their story but I didn't vibe with them and I never have to see them again some of them have been like maybe a few months long I think the only way that early commitment at a young age is gonna work is if both people are very much like aligned in the way that like they don't care if the grass is greener on the other side if there's two people in a relationship and one of them even if they're happy in their relationship and they love their partner there's still a part in the back of their head where they're curious and just want to explore other things the world has to offer good or bad that curiosity is gonna spring out at some point in the relationship and I think it's really gonna hurt it I used to be on the extreme end of the spectrum where I was like monogamy isn't what humans are supposed to be doing like that's not what's in our nature and now I'm at a point where I'm like no actually like monogamy can work it really depends from person to person I think everybody just has to be on the same page I know for myself that if I had ended up staying in the relationship that I was in before I had this like single girl era where I got the chance to like meet so many people figure out what I like in relationships what I don't like in dating there was always gonna be a part of me in my brain where I was gonna be wondering like what if I was always very communicative like I was like I love this I love you but I don't like talking about marriage I'm not at that point yet like let's take it day by day and if one day we find ourselves where we're at a point where we're like actually you know what I don't have this like burning question of like what if in me this is end game for me like I feel comfort in knowing that I don't need to explore other options in order to know that I made the right decision if I ever get to a point where I am in that mindset I'll get married like monogamy all the f 
way it's more so just like i want to make sure that i'm secure in that moment build the blocks up and if that brings us to a point in our lives where we're ready to not look any other way and just be with each other great love that for me i just like knew i wasn't at that point and i was very honest with myself like i think it's really unhealthy to have those like what if or like curiosity sparks in your brain but just kind of like suppressing them because you're scared of hurting the other person or you're just scared of what your life would look like if you didn't have somebody by your side and you were alone the only thing that i feel like discourages me from being like a hundred percent into the idea of early commitment in your 20s is throughout this past year and a half as i've gone on all these dates and like met all these different types of people had these different conversations i've learned so much about myself and what i want in a partner what makes me happy what gives me the ick i feel like maybe i wouldn't have been able to find out all these things that i like and dislike if i hadn't given myself the chance to be exposed to all these different characters and personalities and stories i feel like every human interaction that you have kind of adds something to you and makes you just feel more whole as a person if you feel like you can get that from your interactions with one person awesome i just did it so yeah <laughs> some of these questions are funny i love how comfortable you guys are do you think virgins should explore down there and figure it themselves or wait it out I think do whatever makes you comfortable. I don't think that like if you're a virgin but you really want to like explore down there and finger yourself, the fact that you're a virgin should never be the reason that like stops you from doing that. Honestly, I just I really think virginity is bullshit. It doesn't really make sense because like if you need sexual penetration in order to lose your virginity, then like is a lesbian person who never has sex with a man never gonna lose their virginity? If they're only having intercourse with women and there's nothing that's being like, penetrated into to them like are they gonna stay a virgin forever even though they're having sex with their partner or like partners throughout the course of their life like it just doesn't make sense so i kind of do feel like it's like a man-made constructed concept so if you're only waiting because you're like oh if i do penetration i'm gonna take away my own virginity and like i'm not gonna be able to do it with this other person like if that's the reason you're stopping yourself i don't really agree with that i don't feel like that should be the reason that you stop yourself because you're trying to save it for somebody else i'm pretty sure i explored down there before i even had my first kiss i was a late bloomer when it came to like interactions like sexual experiences with like guys i had my first kiss when i was like 16 everything else kind of like came after that but i knew what was going down there and like what i liked and like what worked for me like years before that because i was just curious if anything when i did start like having sexual intercourse having sex with other people it only helped me because i had sexual experience with myself i knew what I enjoyed so I kind of just like had the upper hand and like being able to communicate that and just having more fun when I am doing it with somebody else because I'm like don't worry I figured it out already so like I'll just let you know you don't have to figure it out for me even though that's really fine too if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself and you want to experience everything with somebody else and like figure it out with them that's great too but if you're curious and there are you know hormones in your body that are like trying to get you to explore things figure things out let it be like if anything you're gonna have a great time and you're just gonna be more prepared what do you think about farting during sex happens to the best of us i don't think i've ever had like a butt fart the vaginal farts we've talked about in these girl talk videos all the time it's such a normal part of having sex it's obviously a little awkward because maybe the other person's like well what and did that one come from and you have to be like don't worry it wasn't my butt it was my vagina i love when people walk straight into this conversation who is that poopy buttholes no we were just talking about poopy buttholes well hopefully not but girls 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 i got my nails done i got my brows done i got my coochie waxed <laughs> How do you differentiate if a guy wants to just sleep with you or actually be friends? I feel like it's pretty easy to figure that out. These are all guidelines. I am so aware of the fact that there are exceptions in life. Maybe you meet someone on the street and you just want to go hang out in their room for a week straight and you guys are in love. Like I'm so aware that there are healthy ways to do things, but just like general guidelines of patterns that I've kind of seen with like my girlfriends and like me also. If a guy that you've never actually met, like maybe you like matched with them on Hinge or you you met them at the bar and like got your number like whatever it is first of all like i feel like you should go on a date if they're putting in the effort to plan like a date a dinner a lunch an activity they're basically like thinking about you enough to like organize something like plan something out where you guys can have fun and like get to know each other that's like the initial green flag that they're not just like trying to f you because if they're just trying to f 
you like they're not gonna go out of their way to put effort into like planning something nice for you like maybe they're gonna be like oh I'm at a bar with my friends at 11 p.m. like you want to come I feel like that's fine if it's like maybe like the first few times after you've been hanging out like I wouldn't really want to do that with a guy if that's like my first way of ever hanging out with them or if they just like straight up send you the you up text like I don't answer those because I'm not at a point in my life where I'm just trying to hook up with people anymore like if you're in that chapter of your life and you don't really give a fuck about an emotional connection and you're just trying to have fun sexually and then peace out like you don't have room in your life to like emotionally commit to someone that's totally fine like that's not the case that I'm talking about obviously if you're asking this question you're actually trying to be friends with them and not just trying to f if they're making effort to spend time with you and not just fast forward to the part they're most likely interested in getting to know you if they listen if you talk about something in one day and then a few dates later they like bring it up there are hints that people put out there and you can pick up on them to know like hey this person's actually vibing with me comparing yourself to other girls feeling shitty about your appearance I just feel like this is something that all girls go through eventually at some point in their life if you never have wow what a dream it is to be you especially with social media and everything we're constantly comparing ourselves to people and I think a lot of that comes undone when you can finally like validate yourself and like build your self-worth around not just like your physical appearance that means like investing in yourself like up here and just like being a good person in general building your confidence around things that are outside of your physical body because at the end of the day I'm super spiritual and I totally believe this I like talk about all the time who we are as people is like a collection of all our memories all our experiences our friends our jokes and none of those things really like reside on your outside all of those things just live in here and like up here when you're comparing yourself to somebody online like you're most likely just comparing your appearance to their appearance if anything it's just like what makes a human being exciting and like friendly and like somebody that you want to spend time with your physical appearance is only going to take you like some way you can be the most gorgeous person in the world but if you don't treat others with kindness if you are just not an interesting person and by interesting i don't mean like you need to have the most like absurd life you can be an interesting person by like having a good ear and like really listening when somebody's talking to you and having input and feedback someone that's relatable like you don't have to be superwoman in order to be interesting our bodies are just like vessels that are carrying our souls and you're only gonna have a soul connection with somebody and have a good life in general if you are living your life through feeding your soul not just like polishing your outer appearance trying to break free from social beauty standards is a daily practice you have to consciously be aware of the fact that like we kind of live in a simulation where we're told like what pretty is I don't want to spend the rest of my life battling with myself and hating myself based off of like a fictionalized rule book that kind of was just like handed to us and been like this is the truth think about all your closest friends like think about the people that make you happy and bring you joy in your life would you ever look at them and be like oh I think they're ugly no it doesn't matter what those people look like to us because I'm not trying to put my friends on a runway show I'm trying to sit on the couch and like giggle I actually have a whole video about my physical appearance like learning how to love myself journey and to this day I like still get DMs and messages talking about how effective that video was so I'm gonna link it down below you guys should definitely check it out because I really like did a deep dive into this topic and that's kind of like how I learned how to not identify with my physical appearance as like the person that I am <laughs> How to be okay with the fact that men are less emotional and actually be okay with it and stop taking it personally. Okay, I don't think that men are less emotional. If anything, I feel like they were just born into a society that has kind of told them that the only real emotion that they're allowed to put out there is anger. Anything other than that like makes them look weak. I'm so sorry, but it also was men that created that structure to begin with. And now they're just like enduring the symptoms of it. But I don't think like using the fact that like, Oh, but like men are less emotional like I shouldn't take it personally is like the right excuse to get out of whatever situation that you're dealing with if a man is refusing to be emotional with you and like be vulnerable with you that's just something that they personally have to deal with themselves they should probably start on better help honestly but you definitely don't have to be okay with that I feel like a good healthy like fun relationship starts when like both parties can be equally vulnerable with each other and not feel like they're being judged when they're doing that if that person isn't opening up to you and 
and refusing to be vulnerable with you, it's probably just not the right time for them to be with you. They need to figure out how to like be able to do that on their own. Once they figured out how to do that on their own, they like take it to the next step and then they can do it with somebody else. I think true love is when you can like look at someone and literally feel like your soul is hugging theirs because you just see every part of them and you don't judge them for it. Like it's just so special and like sensitive. I wouldn't feel okay with just like accepting that someone's only giving me like half of them because I'm not like that. Like I'm showing you in and out baby. Like you better do the same. How to get over a situationship when I don't want to go no contact. What a great question. Kind of went through a really similar situation in the past year where I was kind of in like a situationship. I haven't really had a lot of situationships. I've just really jumped straight into relationships. Maybe had like one in college. Definitely like crushes here and there. But like if I've been talking to somebody for over like two months, three months, usually I eventually started dating them. This one situationship that I experienced when I like first moved to New York kind of broke the cycle for me. It wasn't my call. I did not call the shots. It was definitely the other party who kind of just like peaced out. I was like, <laughs> if anything, I was just confused. I think at the end of the day, you might not want to go no contact. You might want to still be a part of their lives. You might just want to be friends and like have them be in your life. If the other party wants to go no contact and they want to dip out, you really can't force anyone to stay. And you really shouldn't want to force anyone to change your mind about wanting to keep you in their life. I don't want to have to convince someone that I'm worthy of being in their life. You either already get that or you're out. You don't f with me, totally fine. Like live your life, be so happy doing it and I'll go live mine. What is going on with this piece of hair? Boyfriend broke up with me because we don't agree on the same movies and music. I'm confused. <laughs> I can understand how that would be a little confusing. Like if my boyfriend like came up to me and was like, you don't f with Star Wars, peace out. I'd be like, wait, what? Nell's gonna come join for the last few questions. So somebody asked, boyfriend broke up with me because we don't agree on the same movies and music. I'm confused. Okay, he broke up with her just because of that? Well, that's like the reason that he gave her. I need more like information. Like how long did you guys date? Like, you don't, that's all you get. Okay, from the boyfriend's POV, I'm a person that if I don't have the similar interest in music and movies and shows, it would kind of throw me off too. I think like your interest in music and movies and like people say a lot about yourself and like from the type of movies you watch and the music you listen to like you kind of get an idea of I don't say your morals but like your fabric as a your human fabric. being yeah because you learn so much from like music and movies if it was, was like a long relationship and that's the only reason they broke up, that's a little weird but if you're like in a talking stage then it's just like you're not compatible you don't have the same interests. I think maybe it was just like a general buildup of like maybe your boyfriend was like trying to get you into all these things and you just weren't vibing with it and he kind of had a moment Moment of realization where he was like wait like we don't even like the same things why am I investing my time into this like your personality is like who you are as people didn't align and movies and music is like a good indicator of kind of like relatability cuz like if you don't have the same interest then like you can't really relate on a lot of things it's okay girl you'll find somebody that yeah. With your music exactly. and your movies, like, it's fine. I'm sexy. That's just one of the questions. <laughs> Good for you. How to come out of a long dry spell and not be afraid of men? Ooh, this is such a good question for me. <laughs> I've been on a 20 year dry spell. <laughs> How to not be scared of men. A little side note, on my way here, I like snarled at a man, like, as we were crossing the street. Like, I went like this. Because him and his friend were walking towards me and they weren't moving out of the way. Like, I'm not going to move out of the way. You move out of the way. Mom. Just snarl. Show them your teeth and then don't <laughs> be did. afraid of you. No. Thank you guys for sharing <laughs> that story. I really helped answer this question. Okay. She's this magically is. out of her dry spell. How to get out of a dry spell? Just go on Hinge and mess around with men. Make fun of them. Yeah. Poke fun at them. Like, especially on things like Hinge. No one cares about small talk on Hinge. You need to start off on like really silly matters and like just establish the banter before or going into like getting to know each other. When it's like a serious date where you get nervous and you have to like get there and then it's like, oh my God, how many brothers do you have? But like when you're asking those questions, you're showing them like 0.5% of your personality. You really have nothing to lose. You're meeting up with a stranger. They didn't know you before. And if you go on a date and you just act silly and like who you are and like they don't end up vibing with it, you're never gonna talk to them yeah. again. So you really didn't lose anything. It might feel a little nerve wracking putting yourself in a situation where you're just meeting up with a stranger, but but look at it from like the positive angle. Like this person knows nothing about you. You can be any version of yourself that you've wanted to like play around with. And maybe like they end up vibing with it and then you end up vibing with them back. And then yeah. you keep it going. Also like try to not go on a date, especially
especially a first date with the intention of like, oh, okay, like I'm gonna find out if I am gonna date this person or not, like get in a relationship with them. Cause I think that puts so much pressure on both parties. Go on the date thinking that you're just meeting a new person. Low expectations, low disappointment. What would you do if you found out your situationship, best sex, is gay? guys too. Wow, I was in a boat like that. <laughs> I was seeing this guy for like three months and he would not make a move, like ever. Like he wouldn't even hold my hand. And I was like, okay, like this is interesting, whatever. Like I broke it off and then a few months later I found out he's gay. And I'm like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> well, obviously if you're having the best sex with them, I don't think they're gay. Yeah, they're, probably they're just like, bye. bye. Keep f***ing him. What? I feel like that's just like a personal thing. Like if you're not comfortable with that, then that's fair. But if you are, keep doing it. Keep doing it. As long as you're protected and both parties are tested. I mean, I wouldn't have an issue with it. You wouldn't care if your situation ship was by. I would just be like, holy shit, we just doubled the competition. I'm scared that my boyfriend won't like my family. Is that an insecurity or is he a bad person? Great question to answer with you in the room. I've definitely had moments where I've just been kind of nervous about the guy that I'm talking to meeting my family just because of language barriers, if anything. When there's a language barrier, things kind of get lost in translation. My ex-boyfriends would come over and like they would try to like engage in conversation with my dad and my dad would just be like, hmm. And like, they probably were like, like he doesn't with me. And I would be scared, like, oh my God, like they probably think he's being rude. Babe, he genuinely just doesn't yeah. know what you're saying. I think it's so important to have family approval. If I was dating a guy and you didn't like him, I wouldn't be dating that guy. Yeah, I think it depends on your relationship with your family. If you feel like you align like morally and just like perspective wise with your family on a lot of things and their set of eyes is like an additional set of eyes for you that like help you kind of like make a judgment of someone, totally like you want them to get along with your family. But it also depends on like why they disapprove him because like say your dad's like super traditional and he doesn't fuck with like tattoos and piercings and your boyfriend has tattoos and piercings and then your dad is like, don't see him, he has tattoos and piercings. I don't think that's a reason to not see that man. Exactly. How to deal with the pessimism after a relationship that you won't find anyone ever again. I dealt with this when I went through my last breakup just because I felt like I had a really intimate personal relationship. We weren't just dating, we were also like best friends and I kind of like lost my best friend at the same time as losing my boyfriend. And I knew I didn't want to keep this person in my life as just a friend. Like I knew I wasn't going to be able to deal with that. I just had to separate myself from him completely, but still like being civilized. And my pessimism wasn't even that I was like, I'm never gonna find a boyfriend again I was just more so worried about am I ever gonna be able to connect with someone to the degree of comfortability that I had with this person because it really felt special to me and when I would like look at other relationships around me like my relationship I always held at like a high standard just because I knew that at the end of the day we were just like really really good friends and that's definitely something that comes with time like it does not happen overnight it's something that you invest into and I think that journey is also just as fun when you kind of like Sense each layer being peeled like the more time that you spend with them I think it's such a special journey But I think that the thing that helped me kind of like come out of that pessimism was now that he's not in my life anymore I'm still left with that version of myself that I think is so enjoyable and like fun to be around And like the specialness that I was giving off even though you're not in my life anymore I know that potential in myself and I know how special it made this other person feel and how that made me feel like in reverse That's definitely an experience that I can give somebody else and like know that I'm gonna be able to get from somebody else if anything like that was the first time I was doing that with someone and now that I have experience with it like I built my like vulnerability muscle like how much better is it gonna get the next time if anything it just kind of like set the standard I know I'm never gonna settle for anything less than that so I'm not gonna be wasting my time with anybody else there are so many people in the world I think that to not go down this like rabbit hole of like loneliness it's in our human nature to crave connections with other people It's really easy to feel pessimistic and lonely when your life gets like flipped upside down because a breakup literally takes one day And your life can be completely different the next keep yourself surrounded by other people Like whether that's friends or just your support system in general allow yourself to feel sad Don't try to distract yourself get it out of your system Like I think that was the best decision I made 
for maybe two, three months after that, I was just really going through it. Like I was crying, I was journaling and writing letters that I never sent. And like just really like tapping into that really hurt part of my heart and not just trying to like distract myself by like aimlessly going out. Even though that's fun too. It's like a good balance thing. I just wasn't like trying to run away from the feelings that I was feeling. It's also important to really like put the effort in to put yourself out there. The documentary with Stutz, like Jonah Hill's therapist, like one of my favorite things that he said was if you feel like you're in a really alone chapter of your life, hit up those friends that you usually wouldn't and get lunch with them even if you know that they're not going to be your best friend. Just like human interaction subconsciously, like because we are these biological creatures at the end of the day, they really like fulfill our desire to feel like we're a part of a community, a tribe, because that's just what's been coded in our DNA over the years. Whether you realize it or not, like it's actually really healthy for your brain to be exposed to human interaction and it builds confidence. It's just another step in the ladder of like being happy. It doesn't even matter if prior to the meetup, you know like this person isn't it. You don't have the best time with them. It's better than locking yourself in a room and feeling super alone and pessimistic. This was really fun. I feel like we had our own little sleepover and we got to like talk about all things juicy and girls and cute. I've been kind of working on this for a while, but even though like sitting in front of the camera and like having these girl talk videos has been such a fun journey, I do want to build this out to be more of like a long term platform. This is kind of just like me like hinting at what I've been doing behind the scenes, almost like setting up like a girl talk Bible that you guys could always come back to and refer to whenever you guys are feeling like lost or confused about any of these topics that we talk about here on the series. So a lot of really exciting stuff is on the way. I can't wait for that chapter with you guys. Let me know in the comments. I'm always open to your opinions and thoughts on all these questions. I want this to be like a flowing conversation. This is always a safe space. I get so many comments all the time where you guys kind of like tell me that this channel really has become your safe space where you feel super comfortable, like big sister, or like a best friend vibe through the screen. And there's absolutely nothing that makes me happier than hearing that because that's all I've ever wanted this platform to feel like. And I just really want to thank you guys for trusting me with your vulnerability because I think that's really meaningful. And I'm very, very grateful that I can be there to help you along whenever you're going through these things. And if you feel like you could definitely use the help of a professional therapist with the struggles that you're dealing with in your life, again, my link for better help is going to be linked down below. It's just betterhelp.com slash Haley Sunny. And you can get 10% off your first month of sessions. We're all here to heal, grow, and we each have our individual journey, but I also think it's really meaningful that we can be there for each other. Don't forget to hit subscribe. I had a lot of fun with you guys, and I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys so much. All the way to Pluto and back. Bye.